So there's no easy way to do this other than just facing it head on and taking it on the chin, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. Uh, about a month ago, I did a video, a deep dive, about two hours long, where I did a deep dive into the unnamed names that were listed in the Vince McMahon lawsuit document uh, versus Janelle Grant. And I named what I believe to be the unnamed names that were listed corporate officer one, two, three, four, et cetera, all the way down through referee, employee one and two, all of that. Well, apparently I got a little bit of egg on my face as I do need to issue some corrections as a new article came out yesterday. Uh, this came out from Front Office Sports, which I haven't ever heard of before. That doesn't mean they're not legitimate. just means I never heard of them. But uh, what is legitimate are the authors of this article. Uh, it was written by, it looks like, Tim Marchman, who I don't know. John Pollock, who I'm more familiar with. I've heard the name before. But Brandon Thurston has his hands on this document as well. And uh, that's about all the legitimacy that I need. He is certainly a better man than I. And if this is what he's come up with, then I am more than willing to lean in that direction and admit where I went wrong. Uh, the article also does say, which we'll touch on later more in depth, uh, does say that this was confirmed by the uh, lawyer of Miss Grant. So here we go. The uh, corrections right up front and then we'll dive in deeper, kind of take a look at the uh, story now as it unfolds through Brandon Thurston, you know, the latest and also where I went wrong, what I got wrong, that sort of thing. But just right up front here. I had named corporate officer number one as Paul Levesque, Triple H. Uh, that is incorrect. According to this article, it is Nick Khan who was named as corporate officer number one by Brandon Thurston and friends over for front office sports and confirmed by the lawyer, Miss Grant. So I got that one wrong. Corporate officer number two was listed in my video as Stephanie McMahon. Uh, turns out that this was Brad Blum, according to Brandon Thurston, front office sports, and Janelle Grant's lawyer. And then finally, corporate officer number three, he had confirmed as Stephanie McMahon. I had that one as kind of vague. I had narrowed it down. I mean, this was a corporate officer that was basically... Just somebody at the board meeting table that just said, hey, come sit by me, right? So this could have honestly been anybody at the board meeting. There's really no further implications for Corporate Officer 3. But I had ruled out Stephanie and Triple H because I had them pegged for Corporate Officers 1 and 2, which was incorrect. Now, uh, where did I go wrong? Because what I didn't do is I didn't do the video and just come out and say, this is what I think because I'm so smart. <laughs> I spent two hours, two painstaking hours in the video itself. Many, many, many hours. God, I've had fever dreams about the research I did in this video. And it's all for that. Now, look, they did confirm corporate officer number four was correct. I had nailed that as Brian Nurse. That was correct, and I do stand by my other choices as well. Uh, maybe I'll touch on those later. If not, you can certainly go watch that video. It is still up, but the corrections need to be ran here. So where did I go wrong here? Um, so going back over my notes after, because my first reaction to this was bullshit. You know, I stand by what I said, but going back in, uh, I can't refute this either. So I'm going to defer to them. So here's what I found. The first mistake I made. So I'm looking at this maybe a little bit too deep here. Uh, corporate officer number one was listed as a high ranking employee and board member during at WWE during Miss Grant's employment with WWE. And there I had listed out the board members from 2019 through 2022. Um, then the next thing of note for corporate officer number one continued to work in high ranking positions in connection with September 12th, 2023 merger. Uh, I found that to be weird phrasing 
because it didn't say continue to you know work in those positions or stay on the board. To me, it indicated possibly that they were still with the company at that time, but not necessarily in those positions. You know, when you first say was a high ranking employee and board member during Ms. Grant's employment, and then you later say continued to work in high ranking positions, but not in those high ranking positions per se could indicate like I had leaned on Triple H. Um, another thing of note here, uh, because Triple H was no longer on the board, but was still with the company. Um, another thing I leaned on here was that Nick Khan did not join the board until 2022. Yes, he was with the company in 2020. Um, but he didn't join the company till 2022 or didn't join the board till 2022. So, but technically that still places him as a board member and a high ranking employee. Um, I also took into consideration the fact that he was brought on in 2020. Janelle Grant was already working at the company in 2019. So, uh, to me, you know, that did they immediately hire Nick Khan and put him on babysitting duty? You know, like it didn't make sense to me with this girl that was already there. It didn't it didn't jive with me. But uh, popping over to this article here, McMahon presented Bloom and Khan and then they put in parentheses after his hiring in 2020 to grant as his key fixers according to the suit uh the other thing so she had already been there and she had already been vince's girlfriend by the time Khan got brought in so i'm looking at it from the perspective of here's this guy who was brought into the company who's already a known person, right? Nick Khan. He's already uh, an established agent. He's already an established Hollywood mover and shaker. Is the first immediate thing he's going to do when he takes a position at a new corporate company coming in with name recognition, coming in having already worked with The Rock and Ari Emanuel and all that shit to just go... Yeah, let me look over. Look, let me look after Vince's girlfriend immediately. It just it didn't make sense to me. Uh, also, the other thing was that the pairing. Uh, every mention of corporate officer number one was with corporate officer number two. Always grouped together. You know, uh, when Miss Grant brought up, should we include corporate officer one and two in the NDA? Didn't bring up corporate officer three. Just one and two. Uh, if she needs anything, you know, this is the last time I'm going to speak to you. McMahon told Ms. Grant when he was done with her, uh, if you need anything at all, reach out to corporate officer one or two. Uh, oh, let's see. Let's see what else we got here. Corporate officer one and two, uh, were advised by McMahon. You know, they were concerned about, can she be trusted? You know, like what? So that implies that. These people are, you know, know of some kind of dirt and, and are worried about it just seemed like the pairing of corporate officer one and two together all the time mixed with the fact that Nick Khan wasn't there the full time, wasn't on the board the full time and and really already had a name for himself in the entertainment industry before he came in. This wasn't a hired stooge from Vince, for Vince McMahon to be a babysitter. At least that's what I thought. But Brandon Thurston thinks differently. And, you know, going back over my evidence, I can't argue with that. So the high-ranking employee and board member during Miss Grant. So, I mean, even though Khan didn't become a board member till 2022, he was still... A board member technically during Miss Grant's employment. Uh, and it does not indicate that he was a board member or with WWE the entire time, just during Miss Grant's stay. Continued to work in high ranking positions through the merger. Uh, did not specify what those positions were. I would assume if they specified the positions, the first mention, that they would continue to specify those positions but uh you know I, I can't refute it i can argue it towards hunter and stephanie was precluded because she wasn't um 
I forgot offhand why we knocked Stephanie. Oh, because Stephanie didn't continue to work in, in these positions through the merger. So that's how we knew Stephanie wasn't involved with that. But it would be between Triple H and Nick Khan, it just seemed like with the pairing of CO1 and 2 together all the time and just the way everything was worded that it would have been more uh, Triple H, in my opinion, than Nick Khan. But I can, my, my notes cannot... Uh, I, I can't produce anything that could argue Nick Khan either, other than it just doesn't seem to fully fit. But look, man, just because it doesn't, the character profile, though, just because it doesn't make sense that we would bring in this big Hollywood mover and shaker, this big agent guy to do the big deals, uh, to bring him in right away on babysitting duty with, I mean, right away, because she was there at 2019 and he was hired in 2020. So his first gig was, here's my girlfriend, look out for her. It doesn't make sense, but uh, sometimes shit doesn't make sense. I got to defer to Brandon Thurston because in this article, it does say here uh, somewhere down towards the bottom that they did reach out to Miss Grant's lawyer and that she did confirm. So that... Is somewhere in the mix here. I'm trying to look for it, but uh, that'll just end up wasting time. So, look, man, I'm going to defer and thus, uh, you know, takes Triple H off the hook. And I apologize for pointing the finger at him. But as you can see, you know, if you're still watching here, I had the evidence to back it up. It just, you know, I was looking in the wrong direction. And that seems to be the exact same situation for corporate officer number two, Barry Bloom. Let's scroll down here. We got corporate officer number two was a high-ranking employee at WWE who made hiring decisions, conducted prospective interviews with employees, and maintained significant control over personnel decisions. Uh, this was somebody who was noted as being... Uh, let's see, the tied to corporate officer number one in almost every single mention. Uh, worked in these capacities during Miss Grant's employment with WWE. Does not indicate in this one if they stayed on during the merger, which is why I lean towards Stephanie McMahon. As uh, in most cases, Stephanie and Triple H and Nick Khan apparently all kind of fit the bill for both CO1 and 2. Uh, but Stephanie wasn't CO1 because she didn't stay on through the merger. And uh, she was fingered as two in my book here because she did not uh, continue to work in these positions through the merger. So she was uh, seemed to be gone. But uh, And Brad Bloom uh, did work. He does, uh, I believe he still works for WWE to this day. If not, he, he would have ended, uh, forgive me for not having that in my notes or pulling that up quick, but at least he was through 2023. So I don't know if he stayed on after the merger, but he was there to that point. Um, and I had completely overlooked Brad Bloom based on the fact that, uh, this was the guy that was in charge of, operations he was the chief operating officer the coo he took that position from triple h he was overseeing marketing creative services travel um but uh, so in in those positions it's like why are you hiring people in legal and placing because corporate officer number two placed it was basically Miss Grant's babysitter, right? Placed her in the legal department, then came in and said, okay, now you're making too much noise in legal. We're going to move you over to, you know, a stint in the XFL. Then we're going to move you over to uh, under John Laurinaitis and talent relations. Uh, so this person was completely Miss Grant's babysitter and overseeing every single position that she had. You know, um, hands on. She was this was the person. Remember, if you have any questions, contact corporate officer one or two. Oh, what else we got here? Saying that corporate officer two would figure out where uh, Ms. Grant would be placed. Vince McMahon personally gave Ms. Grant pointers on how to interview with corporate officer two. Um, 
corporate officer too, barely even, she didn't even need to really qualify for the job. She was just kind of handed one. Um, but what I did kind of, so I ruled him out early as not really even being in the position to make these decisions, but I did overlook one little thing here. And that is, let's see, this line became EVP of operations and chief of staff in 2019, then COO in 2020. So I think I completely overlooked this chief of staff position. And to be honest with you, I haven't even looked up what that would be yet. So let's see here. So as far as LinkedIn would describe, we have chief of staff work in all industries and are integral to a company's productivity and effectiveness. Uh, roles vary across organizations. However, the essential remains the same. Chief of staff responsibilities include leading teams, easing communications, and uniting people across organizations to keep them moving forward. Uh, these are often the right hand man of top tier executives. So again, description, but plausible. I guess I didn't know enough about it. So plus the pairing of one and two, I had already kind of discovered that one was triple H. So the other must be Stephanie. So I was kind of leaning that direction to begin with, but you know, I had a lot to back it up. Um, let's see what else I had going on here. A high-ranking employee at WWE who made hiring decisions, conducted prospective employee interviews, and maintained significant control over personnel decisions. Uh, as much as that could be like a Stephanie McMahon job, um, chief of staff, I guess, could fall into that as well. Uh, figuring out where Miss Grant would be placed. So... If the chief of staff is placing interns and, and babysitting the girlfriend and there for her to reach out to if she has any questions or anything, I mean, very well. You know, I can't refute it. Brad Bloom could easily be that person. Um, and maybe I just don't know about uh, enough about the corporate roles to know how hands on he would be in that situation. But that's where I got Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. I leaned on basically they're one and two are interchangeable in most ways and often mentioned together. Stephanie was not on the board and did not stay on or did not stay on through the merger. And that's why I had uh, placed her at number two and ruled out Nick Khan for number two because they would have mentioned that this person was a board member and they didn't. And, uh, Completely overlooked Brad Bloom, so that's my bad. As far as corporate officer number three, I'm not going to take the L on that one as much because all I really said for corporate officer number three was it really could have been anybody at that fucking executive meeting. That was literally the only thing said here. Let's see. Uh, corporate officer number three, high-ranking employee and or board member during Miss Grant's employment with WWE. Uh... Another high-ranking official and member of the board at the time of Miss Grant's employment with WWE motioned for Miss Grant to come sit in a chair near corporate officer number three at the board table during one of the meetings. This was insinuating, and this is why they weren't named, because it's such a frivolous thing to throw out anyway, insinuating that this person must have known that there was a relationship between Vince and this girl if this person was motioning, hey, come sit by me. What I overlooked is that if this was Stephanie McMahon, that would make me think she knows, right? If I'm Miss Grant and Stephanie McMahon says, hey, come sit by me. That's different than anybody else on the board just being friendly and saying, hey, come sit by me. But I ruled Stephanie and Triple H out because I had them as one and two. So I didn't even peg them as part uh, as CO3, which does add a different layer. So where are we at with all of this? Well, as far as corporate officer one and two, if it's Nick Khan and Brad Bloom, uh, which was confirmed by the lawyer, according to this article here, 
then uh, what they're being accused of is facilitating facilitating Miss Grant's existence at the WWE. So they're placing her in her role, moving her to a different department when her role gets, she gets a little too noisy in this role. They are there specifically to be reached out to if you have any questions, concerns, you need help with anything. Uh, you know, if we, when we move on and you if you need to leave WWE, uh, they will make sure that you get find a job somewhere else. Like they are straight up just her babysitters. Now, does this mean that they know uh, the dirty deeds happening behind closed doors? Would they know that Vince would have shit on her head as accused in the document or or used, you know? wrestlers uh, wrestler dildos and stuff whatever he was doing no they would not know those details or at least have not been implicated to knowing those details they're simply being implicated for essentially knowing that this was vince's girlfriend and making her uh doing him a solid looking out for her in the company and making sure that she has a nice easy stay so i mean Whatever the corporate policy is on facilitating secret girlfriends, I don't know. Uh, it's definitely not ethical, but is it illegal? I don't know. Not for me to say, that's for sure. Corporate officer number three simply saying, hey, come sit by me. If it was Stephanie McMahon, that I mean, look, being Stephanie McMahon and her being friendly to Ms. Grant adds an extra layer, right? Stephanie isn't going to... I would think Stephanie is being friendly because she might know, but we don't know that for sure. All she's being uh, implicated for here is saying, hey, come sit by me at the at an executive table to Miss Grant to make her feel more comfortable or welcome or whatever. There is nothing there. There's nothing to even implicate that this that Stephanie would have known that Miss Grant was Vince's girlfriend. That is an assumption by Miss Grant and the lawyer, and uh, a strong reason why Corporate Officer Three wasn't even named. But if that's the case, you know, so so did they know? Did they not know? It's irrelevant because they, there's no way of knowing per the accusations in the document. Corporate Officer Number Four, on the other hand, which I did nail, Brian Nurse. Uh, which was one of the people I was particularly proud of him and uh, employee number one, Rich Herring. I was particularly proud of both of those discoveries because I don't even know who either of those people are. I've never heard of them in my life. So to have found them and fingered them as the people responsible, I do pat myself on the back for. And uh, Brian Nurse confirmed in this article he was a legal guy. He was basically Ms. Grant's boss when she was placed into the legal department. And he was uh, Vince's right-hand man, his personal counsel, essentially. This guy was a senior vice president of general counsel for WWE. So he's like their top lawyer guy or one of their top lawyer guys, basically. And he would have been Janelle's essentially direct boss. And um, per the story told throughout the document, this person hated Miss Grant, did not like her being there at all, uh, was fairly annoyed with her. Anytime she would walk in a room and he's laughing and telling stories with somebody or something like that, he would just quickly zip it put a mean mug on his face and walk out the room or something like that. You know, very much gave her the cold shoulder, very much gave her the vibes of, I know why you're here and I don't approve of it and I don't like it. So that's kind of where Brian was. So Brian knew he was very hands-on with her, very much her boss. Um, let's see what else we got here. High-ranking employee at WWE who worked with legal affairs at the company. Uh, thumbs up on her job. And then he was removed because of the uh, drama here. It looks like he was removed at the end. Of, he was terminated in November of 2020. And then uh, they were looking to find a replacement for him. And then they eventually just moved Ms. Grant because they were having trouble finding a replacement to fill the spot. And they figured a lot of that had to do with this weird Vince's girlfriend out there on the floor and all the heat and drama because it made noise. People found out somehow or at least 
uh, started looking at her like she was giving or getting special treatment or, you know, she was she was figured out. So they had, that's why they had to move her out of there. And Brian Nurse, corporate officer number four, was her, her boss there. And he didn't like her and he didn't do anything to make her life easy there or facilitate shit. He might have known, you know, the, the you could say that he knew that this was Vince's girlfriend, but he didn't do anything to help her out. <laughs> In fact, he might have been uh, a headache for her, which might have most likely been why he was swiftly removed by the end of 2020. So that's that. That covers what I got wrong, how I got it wrong, what the document says instead. Uh, I did cross-reference with my notes, and I can't refute it. You know, uh, Nick Khan, uh, Brad Bloom, Stephanie McMahon, Brian Nurse, that's, it's accurate. It wouldn't have been my guess. It wasn't my guess. Uh, again, the character profiles don't make sense to me, but that's a huge uh, wake-up call for me because I guess in those situations where I'm finding myself like, okay, it could be either one of these people, right? You lean to start to lean towards what's making sense. Okay, well, one and two are paired together all the time. Triple H and Steph are paired together all the time, right? And, you know, if I already had the case building that it could be Triple H or Steph for either one of them, they're always together. I leaned very heavily on that. I leaned on the fact that Nick Khan was not around the full time. He wasn't on the board the full time. He wasn't hired. He was started after Janelle Grant had already worked there, which I would have thought would have ruled him out right away. I just cannot, I still cannot fathom that they would hire Nick Khan off the street. He wasn't like some fucking scrub looking for a job at a corporate, you know what I mean? Like where he's happy to be there and lucky to be there and, you know, he's going to do whatever Vince's bidding is. He actively worked against Vince to push him out in a lot of ways by, you know, voting against him and that sort of thing. Nick Khan was brought in to do the big deals. And I just can't imagine first day on the job, essentially, hey, by the way, here's my girlfriend. Look out for her. Babysit her. But Brandon Thurston, that's what he came up with. And, uh, you know, according to this article here. Front Row Sports, is that what it was again? Let me pop it back up here. Front Office Sports then asked Grant's lawyer, Ann Callis, whether the reporting was accurate. And the response they got back is, I can confirm that these names are correct. So, there it is. It is what it is. Uh, look, I took a fair stab at it. Uh, you know, my work was there. Like I said, if I would have just came out flippantly and been like, oh, this is what I think it was. Like, I showed my work. I spent two hours doing it. And look, I was goddamn close. I was goddamn close. Those names were on my board. And uh, as we went over here, I had at least a, a decent rationale for ruling them out. But... In any case, I got it wrong, and I have to come out here and own up to that and uh, take it on the chin, and so I will. So apologies to any of you that uh, took my uh, video for the gospel. Hopefully you took that and anything else I do and anything else anybody does, even this Nick Khan, uh, Brian, Brad Bloom front office sports gimmick. Take it all with a grain of salt. Do your own research. You know, I gave you all of my information along with it. You know, I said, here's why I think this. Here's why I think that. At any point in time, if you were watching, you could have been like, well, actually, it could be that way. And even somebody did. Somebody called me out in the comments on the video and was like, hey, you know, Corporate Officer 1 could be Nick Khan. And I ruled it out because Khan was not with WWE until 2020 and not on the board till 2022. Huge mistake. Um, you know, because they even specified here in the article Khan later when he joined. So there was, I guess, nothing in the lawsuit that said this person was there the entire time. They just said they were there during Miss Grant's stay. So weird wording is what it is. I was close, so 
Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you're mad at me, if you want to yell at me and stuff, go for it. Um, but, hey, man, I stand by my work still. You know, I didn't half-ass it, and I didn't uh, bullshit through it, and I didn't uh, throw my opinions in there other than when, you know, I had to make a leap of, you know, it doesn't seem to fit this character profile to do that, which was very stupid. So that's where I went wrong. Let me know your thoughts in those comments below. Thank you guys for watching my correction. Peace, love, and pizza. I'm going to go ahead and move on. <laughs>